been lifted. Businesses are open and COVID-19 measures are less restrictive. There's still fear, anxiety and stress about living safely through a pandemic at times. And that can take a toll on mental health. And September is National Suicide Prevention Month. And next Sunday marks the start of Suicide Prevention Week, a time when mental health experts and everyone shares their ideas for action. And morning anchor and health reporter Kirsten O'Connor will be in later today. So Brianna Bowles is standing in now to ask a doctor about the serious public health problem. Well, Bridget, we know times have been pretty stressful across the board as of late, and some people may have found themselves in more of a difficult time than they've ever experienced before. So Kirsten spoke to licensed mental health counselor Chantal Abbas, who says the pandemic has even affected mental health counselors like herself. Well, it's definitely increased my uh, busyness. So I have a lot more clients than I had before, and some clients that have struggled in the past are coming back and and that's very normal you know as we go through life and as we have stressors and we have anxiety and we have things come up a lot of times people go through therapy and they build a connection and then they come back and they visit back again and work through other things so as these stressors have started whether it be financial the social isolation lack of resources, um, kids are homes, a lot of them, parents are out of work. There's a lot of really high stress situations. So just wanting to encourage everyone that it is okay to reach out if you have a therapist and you wanna go back to go back or to develop that relationship with someone and really um, problem solve how to work through this time because it's difficult for everyone. And one of the things that can be so difficult about depression is recognizing the signs in somebody we love. Not everyone who is depressed will always appear sad or struggling, but Chantala says some of the things to look out for include loss of interest in activities they love, increased fatigue or sleep problems, sudden changes in appetite or weight, irritability or uncontrollable emotions. So if we see someone maybe struggling to get to work or struggling to get out of bed, having problems in their relationships or just daily tasks, this could be a sign of depression. And a lot of times that word scares people and they don't want to admit it. They say, oh, you know, I'm just under motivated or lazy. It's okay to experience that sometimes. It's normal, especially when there are major stressors going on and everyone has a different way of reacting to stress. Even if we aren't directly impacted by COVID by being sick, we are impacted by all of these constraints that are put on us now, all of these concerns and all these changes in our environment. And sometimes we don't even realize we're being impacted and we think, oh, well, everyone else is struggling. Everyone else that's sick or in the hospital should be having a hard time, but not me. But everyone has their own individual story and situation. And sometimes we don't even realize we're stressed. So really having a mental health check on ourselves and giving ourselves a little bit of grace to, you know, focus on taking care of ourselves. Another important note, Chantala says she's seen an increase in depression and potentially suicidal feelings recently among teens and young adults. Ages 17 through 24 are typically the most at risk because the brain is not fully developed yet and there are a lot of life changes during that time. Chantala says the most important thing in helping someone you love is not being afraid of having that conversation. We should not be afraid of this word. A lot of people are afraid of the word suicide. Talking about it with our kids and with our teens does not cause it to happen because they know about it. They hear about it. It happens in their schools. Unfortunately, I talk to kids all the time and most of them somehow remotely knew of someone that took their life. So we don't have to be afraid of it. We need to educate them and really open up that conversation and make sure that they're well supported and that they have a safe place that they can talk about it. It can be difficult to know how to support someone who is struggling with depression or suicidal thoughts, but the first thing you can do is let them know they're not alone. For more information on risk factors, indicators, and ways to get help, you can call the suicide hotline at 1-800-273-8255, and we've posted that number as well as all the information you might need on clickorlando.com slash news6 at 9. Candice. Great information. Oh, Thank Bridget, you, Bree. It's a fine. <laughs> and here's a live look outside now of a gorgeous.